Hello, friends. Welcome back to Rev BTB Does It. I am Beth, Rev BTB, and today's video is going to be me sharing my top five frugal food tips. So basically, this is going to be my top five tips to help you make the most out of your food budget um, and get the most out of the meals that you're getting, that you're creating for your family. I do meals for myself, my two adult children, and um, or two of my adult children. I have four kids all together, and all four of them are adults, but two of them are still here with me, and my mom also. So basically, we are here in a household of four, and the way that I save money and um, you know basically try to create more for my family through food savings, um, these are the tips that I that I employ. So the first one that I'm going to talk to you about is making your meals from scratch. Now, I used to be a big convenience meal person. I had a big freezer and it used to be full of all the processed stuff. So there was always chicken nuggets and pizzas and pizza pockets and, you know, pizza rolls and, um, all the other, you know, like uh, the chicken cordon blues and all these convenience frozen meals because I thought that that was going to help me create more for my family when in all actuality it was costing me more to have all those things because A, I had to stock up on all kinds of stuff and B, I had to have the freezer to be able to store all of that kind of stuff and um, C, it was really not making us feel very good as people. Now, um, since I've moved to more scratch cooking, that has helped me a lot more to feel better about what we're eating, as well as save more money in the long run because I'm not just buying things out of convenience. I'm buying things more out of um, necessity and I can be more creative with that. So uh, basically making meals from scratch is my first big tip. So you can always go to the store and buy a $5 pizza, but is it going to taste as good as one that you create at home? Probably not. So basically I'm not saying you can't use some of those processed items because I do employ of quite a few of them still in my scratch food making. It's basically, I call them the shortcuts. They're easier ways rather than doing every single thing from scratch. And, you know, I do box mixes and stuff rather than, you know, uh, like I made a blueberry bread the other day. Um, and instead of buying one for $6 at the store, I was able to create one at home for $2.50. It tastes better. I was able to add things into it that would make our family enjoy it more. And it just, it felt better to have that warm home baked item rather than going to a little plastic container and grabbing a muffin out of it. Um, so creating meals from scratch really is a better way to eat not only because you're creating the meal at home but you're also putting into it the effort which makes it taste better to me um i find that my kids enjoy the homemade meals more my mom enjoys the homemade meals more and you know what, what's for dinner tonight oh pizza eh. But if you say homemade pizza, they're like, oh, you know what I mean there? It just, it seems like it's a better reception. It makes it more appetizing. And also you're injecting yourself into that meal, which I think there's something to be said about that rather than just tossing something in the freeze, you know, from the freezer into an oven or microwave, getting it done quick. There's something to be said about actually creating the meal and feeling good about how people compliment that meal after it's all done. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is to make those meals from scratch. Um, there's nothing that says you can't use convenience meal uh, foods to help you supplement or create those scratch meals. Like um, I do a lot of... Uh, stuff with Pillsbury dough. So there's pizza dough and there's the crescent roll dough and there's the biscuits and stuff like that that I use because I'm not a good biscuit maker. I found that out. I can't do biscuits to save my life. 
Um, and I know there are options out there that can help you get to that point, but I'm just not there yet myself. But I, I like the the ability to interject some of those foods that are going to be time savers and step savers for me into a homemade meal. It makes it feel better. It just it makes it feel better to me when I'm making it from homemade. So um, making your meals from scratch and employing those convenience foods and shortcuts to help you get to that scratch, you know, it's, it's always great. Um, the next one that I'm going to, the next tip that I've got for you is to shop your pantry. So you're going to look in your fridge, you're going to look in your freezer, you're going to look into your dry can pantry cupboard and see what you already have on hand that you can then pull together for a meal. So you've got sauce, you've got spaghetti, you've got hamburger in the freezer from another time. Make yourself your own spaghetti meal. It's very easy, quick, you know, you put the meat sauce together with your hamburger and your sauce, and then you cook your spaghetti and boom, you've got a nice homemade meal. If you've got leftover hamburger rolls or sub rolls, turn that into garlic bread. See how where I'm going with that? You, If you're shopping your pantry, you already have a meal that you don't even have to go to the grocery store to get because Johnny decides he wants to have spaghetti for dinner. You've already got all that stuff right there and you don't need to go to the store and spend extra to be able to get that stuff. So shop your pantry first before you go to the grocery store and see what you can create for meals from the pantry items that you already have and then just go and buy the things that you would need to finish off the meal. So for that spaghetti, maybe you don't have any fresh vegetables to be able to create a salad to go along the side of it or maybe you don't have the bread. So you can go to the store, buy the sub rolls, create your own homemade made garlic bread which obviously is going to taste amazing rather than buy a loaf from the store and you're going to be able to have those sub rolls for later because you don't need to buy you don't need to use all of the sub rolls to make the garlic bread probably one or two sub rolls would create the garlic bread fine and then you already have something that you can work from for the next thing which could be the next day um, uh, of making you know a lunch meat sub that you have from some more leftovers that you have but shop your pantry and find out what you can use from your pantry first before going to the grocery store. Um, there's nothing that says you can't go and buy everything that you need to create an awesome meal at the grocery store, but you're going to find yourself putting things back in your pantry that you find that you already have. So if Johnny wanted spaghetti and you went to the store and bought everything that you needed to make spaghetti, and you go to your pantry and you find, oh, I've got two boxes already of half-used noodles and I've got a sauce back here. I should have used that. Well, now you've got all that still and you've just spent money at the grocery store to buy the stuff to create a meal that you didn't have to spend any money on because you already had all the stuff at home. So make sure you're shopping your pantry first before you go to the grocery store and then buy the supplemental things from the grocery store. That right there is going to lead me to my third tip, which means shop your clearance at the store. Before you go into the regular aisles, head right to the clearance section and see what there is there. Because you know what? There may be some sub rolls there to go along with that pasta Johnny wants. And they're going to be cheaper for the home baked um, or store baked grocery rather than a processed sub roll and they're gonna be on discount because the store's trying to get rid of it. And alongside and in league with that is shop your flyer. Make sure you're looking at the front page. Those are what's called loss leaders, which means that they, the store is gonna take a little cut on what their profit is on that because they're trying to get you into the store to buy more things that you know if they can get you in there on, you know, 39 cent a pound apples, which you know, are 39 cent each apples. Um, they know that they can get you into the store with that sale. They're going to write, they mark it down so that they can get you into the store, but you're going to go in there for more than just apples. They're going to, it's going to give you a reason to go there that maybe you normally wouldn't have. And um, at that point, when you're shopping your loss leaders, you're not going to just buy one. You should be buying two of that item, especially if it's like a half price sale or a buy one, get one free. 
if you do that, you can then stock that pantry so that the next time you need to shop your pantry, you already have those items there and they're not going to cost you the full price that you would need, say, if you wanted to go. And we're going to go back to Johnny and his spaghetti. If the spaghetti noodles are buy one, get one free, you're going to buy two, put one in your pantry for another time and be able to use one to replace the one that you just used for your spaghetti or whatever, and then have it for the next time. And it's only gonna be half the price rather than oh, Johnny wants spaghetti again and having to go to the grocery store and buy the sauce at full price and buy the noodles at full price and, and be able to create that meal if you're shopping your loss leaders by doing that. So having a pantry that is, you know, has good stock in it because you're buying the stuff that's on sale is going to help you in the long run because, again, you're not going to spend as much every time you go to the store on buying things because you've got a meal plan in, in your mind and you're going to buy all of the things that you need to create that meal plan for the week. You've already got an idea of what's in your pantry and you can, you know, shop that instead and save that money. So instead of spending $25 at the grocery store, you're only going to spend five because you've got half of that stuff or three quarters of that stuff at home and you bought it when it was on sale. You're not paying full price for it. So we're going to, so at that point, um, it's just a lot, it, it saves you a lot more money because you're actually shopping the sales, you're shopping the loss leaders rather than buying impulse buys because of what you, you feel like you need to have um, to create your meals for that week. Um, the next thing that's on my list here is sh make sure you're shopping the clearance and the loss leaders every time you go to the store because you can then put things in your pantry to be able to shop later. So make sure you hit those places first and then do your fill in with the regular. So we've got make meals from scratch for one tip, shopping the pantry, and then shopping the clearance at the store to help fill that pantry up. Um, the next tip that I'm gonna tell you about is to make sure you're using, when you're at the store, using those store apps um, I only have two stores that are local to me. One of them is just a few minutes down the road and the other grocery store is about a half an hour away. And then the closest cheapest one, which would be Walmart is about 45 minutes away. So I'm not in um, a very good position area to shop all kinds of places and all kinds of, of sales all at once. So I have to think about where I'm going um, and so if I'm using my store apps, I can see what's on sale and is it going to be worth my time, money, and effort to shop at Walmart to catch the sales because there's enough things that are on that sale to warrant me driving 45 minutes to go get that stuff. Or the next closest one is a half an hour, 40, you know, 20 minutes, 20 minutes to half an hour away. Um, and if I'm using my app, I'm not going anywhere. I'm shopping it right there at home. And I'm making my list from, you know, checking out my pantry and stuff and seeing what's on sale at that place and then buying only what I need from those places. Um, in addition to using your store apps, um, you have coupons. And once you start using your store apps, they basically help to track what your spending is, but not only your spending, but what you're spending your money on. And when you're shopping with the apps helping you, you are telling the store what you like, and therefore they can customize that app to give you coupons and deals or even freebies, some of the places, like I've gotten a couple of freebies from um, Hannaford and from Shaw's, both because I've used my store app and they see what I'm putting in my lists and what coupons I'm using, as well as tracking my spending through their stores when I use my rewards numbers so that I'm able to get deals customized just for me um, and getting those free items. So if you're doing that and employing those apps, it's going to save you money because you're able to put things in your pantry that you normally will always use. 
um, in addition to that, I also use other apps like uh, Fetch is the one that I use most often. Ibotta doesn't always apply to the stores that I have because there's restrictions on Ibotta, but when I can use it, I use it. I also try to employ Shopkick every once in a while and when I remember, um, but Fetch is the one that I use most often because I do upload all my receipts. Um, I do have a Walgreens near me, which I employ a lot, and use that rewards app and the rewards I get from that to supplement what I need. I can buy my um, toiletry items and whatnot at a very good discount as far as um, what their sales are and get, um, you know, rewards back that can help me make more out of my food dollar because I can then use my rewards on the things that they have on sale and so that helps me out so when I'm buying toilet paper it's actually helping me buy spaghetti sauce when they have it on sale three for five and I've just spent you know ten dollars on toilet paper and paper towels and gotten a five dollar cash back reward well that means I can take that five dollar reward and go right back into the store and buy three jars of sauce because they were three for five. And what is that gonna cost me? Nothing, except for the initial money that I spent on the toiletries that I needed already that were on sale that gave me the rewards to buy them. So um, that's just one way that you can actually stretch that food dollar a little bit further is making sure you're using your rewards apps, using your, um, money saving coupon apps like I bought a fetch shopkick coupons.com um there's a bunch of other ones. checkout 51 I think is another one that doesn't really help me much because I'm not like I said I'm in a food desert area so I have like one grocery store that is you know not always the best at those apps but anyway it still helps so make sure you're using your apps and um if you need links to find out about Ibotta and Fetch and I think it's um, Shopkick maybe that I have in my description, use those links to sign up and see what you can get for in your area um, to help you with your food dollar. So, and then this is leading me to the last one. Um, creating meals that you can transform. So if you're going to create meals that you can transform, say you've got, there's a sale that was on hamburger and it's, you know, the family pack normally you would only buy a pound, but if it's three and a half pounds, you get a cheaper discount. Buy the cheaper discount meat and split it up into different meal packs and put those in your freezer to have later. But then you can also use all of that meat and create meals that you can transform. Um, if you were to make tacos one night, you can save whatever leftover taco meat and rice you have to create something for the next night or put it in the freezer to create something different later. Um, tacos one night, nachos the next night, or um, taquitos or something to that effect. There's always something that you can use your leftovers to turn into something else. Um, I had sloppy joe mix and I had not even enough for another sandwich at one point in time and I create what's called bubble up pizza bake which actually is a recipe that's on the channel so if you wanted to take a look at that go ahead and take a look but um, in the sauce for that I use to make that bubble up pizza bake is a combination of hamburger and um, ground sausage. And if you add that sloppy joe meat, that really just adds a smoky flavor to it and it can stretch that bubble up pizza bake a little bit further or make me not have to use as much of the other meats because I'm putting that sloppy joe mix right in there. And believe it or not, it's gonna go along you know, the same lines, it may taste a little bit more barbecue, but that just adds a smoky flavor to your bubble up pizza bake. So there's different things that you can do. Roast a chicken. Eat the roasted chicken dinner one night. Boil the carcass and get all the, the broth and create a stew for the next night with your leftover vegetables. Or um, use the gravy as well and create a thicker 
um, the thing and make chicken and dumplings by that and then cutting up some of the Pillsbury biscuits into it to create dumplings. There are things that you can always do to create the next meal from the previous meal. A pot roast from the crock pot can then be turned into beef stew. Um, things to the, of that nature where all you have to do is add a few more things to create another full meal out of what you've already made. So there you have it. There's my five frugal uh, food tips. Make meals from scratch. Shop your pantry. Use your short stores clearance and loss leaders. Use those store apps and um, other apps that help you save money. And create meals that you can transform and stretch over a bunch of different days where you can put away some of that stuff to save for another time. Um, and... I, that, those are my five tips. I hope that they can help you like they've helped me. Um, and if you want to, leave some comments below and let me know what you do to help you stretch your food dollar. And until next time, RevBTV does it.